Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 20th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Typically, most of the malware we're dealing with arrives in English language emails. Now, Pratt is taking a look at something a little bit different in his latest diary, and that's a mail spam written in Russian. Now, in this particular case, the mail spam links to Trolldash or Shade, which is ransomware. In the past, these Russian emails typically just included a zip file that would then, of course, install the ransomware ransomware for you. Turns out the attackers are now taking an extra step. They're attaching a PDF. Now a link in the PDF will then get you to the zip file, similar zip file as before, that will then take care of installing the ransomware. And talking about ransomware, while we don't really hear as much about ransomware as we heard like a year ago, it's still quite active, of course. And one variant that has been very active this year so far is Gant Crap. We have had a couple cases where people contacted us that are infected with Gant Crap. Well, uh, there is some good news here. Bitdefender released yet another free decryption tool for victims of Gant Crap. It works all the way up to version 5.1. However, as it's typical, the case with these kind of decryption tools, the bad guys already came out with version 5.2. Has been cited about three days ago. Now, some of the initial reports, it wasn't quite clear whether it was actually the new version that they reported. Something else about Gantt crap. Uh, now, a lot of ransomware, of course, arrives as an email attachment and users typically install it willingly. With Gantcrab, they also sort of do some active probing on networks. These are the guys that will also infect you via exposed RDP servers. If they have a password handy, for example, from one of the breaches, they'll use that to then inject their ransomware and typically infect the entire network. As a rule of thumb, if you are getting infected by ransomware, then you're doing something fundamentally wrong security-wise, like you're exposing RDP servers, you're allowing attachments like executables uh, that are sipped into your network. So if you have a problem with ransomware, take a close look and really sort of you know, don't just fight that ransomware, but look at your security posture overall and see what are some of the fundamental weaknesses that are being used to get this ransomware into your network. Well, the next story actually goes back to Russia and with that to a report by Group IB where they're looking at some of the incidents that they responded to in Russian banks. The problem here is that apparently many Russian banks aren't really quite sort of up to common standards when it comes to cybersecurity. And as a result, they're quite easily breached by criminals. Now, okay, that's a big deal, but uh, what's really happening then is that once the attacker has a foothold in one of these banks, they're actually using this not just to further infiltrate this particular bank's network, but they're also using that access to then send more convincing phishing emails to other banks. And if anything, this sort of has really been a trend that is not just affecting banks, but is affecting other industries as well, where attackers are coming up with better phishing scams in part by exploiting this trust relationship between different organizations. These trust relationships, of course, have always been a big deal, but uh, looks like attackers are really sort of you know, getting a better feel for how to actually leverage this access. And Microsoft gave us today a glimpse at what's going to come in March's Patch Tuesday. And the particular feature that they were highlighting is that there will be an update for Microsoft Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2 that will add SHA-2 support for updates. Microsoft announced in November that they're going to roll out SHA-2 for all of their patches in 2019. And this particular patch being released in March will enable them to do that all the way back to Windows 7.
The next step will come in June when Microsoft will only release SHA-2 signed updates for Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019. July will then be the important date for Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008. At this point, you'll only get SHA-2 signed updates. So if you haven't applied the March update by then, you will not get any future updates. Now, where things get tricky at that point is if you're installing Windows 7 from scratch, you should still be up getting updates. You just have to download that March update first and that should happen automatically. Now, there are ongoing problems with getting updates for new installs, but uh, they're not related to this SHA-2 issue. Of course, on the other hand, uh, you only got about a year of Windows 7 support anyway. So, well, uh, just update to Windows 10. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.